In this video, we're going to take a look at auto layout and stack views. And these are two great ways to make sure that your app looks great on devices of different sizes and orientations. So the first thing we're going to look at is auto layout. And to show that, I'm just going to go to my object library here, and I'm going to pick a label. So I'm just going to type label in here, and I'm going to drag a label onto my screen. So I'm just going to click and drag, and I will set it uh, up in the upper left corner. Notice that I have these guides that kind of help me to lay out my label. So I'm going to put it in the upper left. If I wanted to at this point I could give it a different name. I could write, um, let's just write auto layout is helpful. And so I have a, a sample label. So it looks great. So I know that on an iPhone 10R, this label is going to appear here in the upper left-hand corner. Let's say I rotate my device. Well, there's this handy tool down here called the View As, where I can pick different devices. Let's change the orientation. We notice that Auto Layout is still in the upper left-hand corner, where we expect it to be. If I change it to an iPad, it's still in the upper left-hand corner. So that works as we expected. So I'm going to go back to a 10R. And let's go ahead and move, whoops, sorry. Let's go ahead and move this label to the center. So you can see it's in the center of the portrait orientation. Let's go ahead and check that out on landscape. Whoa, it's gone. So it looks like my label is gone. It should be right in the center. Well, the problem is that in this orientation, it's this many pixels from the top. So however far down this is, and then it's this many over from the left-hand side. Well, it tries to do the same thing. It does that many pixels, which means my label is down here somewhere. If I click on it, it shows where my label actually is. It's not even on the screen anymore. So that's clearly not gonna work. So there must be some way to ensure that it stays in the center of the screen. And this is where auto layout comes in. And the way we ensure that a label or button or any of our other objects is in the right place is by the use of what are called constraints. Constraints are a way to make sure that an element is positioned in exactly the right place in the screen. And there are a couple of different ways to add constraints. Uh, the first is by using these buttons down here. And if I click on, make sure my, where my elements is selected, I'm going to click on this, and I can add new alignment constraints. And notice that I can center it horizontally in the container and vertically in the container, and I can add two constraints. So if I click that, you can see it puts in these solid blue lines, and they are blue, which is great. And so that means I have no errors, and you can see now this constraint area appears here in my document outline. Now if I move the orientation, it's right in the center, exactly right where I want it to be. If I click on an iPad, still in the center. If I change the iPad back that way, it's in the center. So by adding those constraints, I put this label exactly where I want it to be and on all the different devices. If I ever want to remove the constraints, I can use this button here. I click on it and I choose clear constraints. Be very careful though. If you choose this one, it clears the constraints of everything in this view. So if you spent a long time adding constraints for different labels and text fields and buttons, and you hit this one, it'll clear everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear constraints, and that moves it. So that's great if I want to put this in the center of the screen, but let's say I want to put it somewhere else. Let's say I need to put it up here somewhere, but I don't necessarily want it in the center. Well, I can add constraints in a second way to help me do that. So by holding down the control key in the same way I control dragged uh, outlets and actions, I'm going to hold the control key and I can drag to different parts. So if I drag up to this view and let go, I can choose from a number of different options. And this time I'm going to choose top space to safe area. And the safe area, if I want to go ahead and you guys see the same safe area over here, if I click on it, it's the area that is not blocked by the notch or the bottom part of the, of the device. So I know that the screen would cover all this part. 
So usually you make sure to lay things out to the safe area, not to the very top of the view. So you want to make sure to lay out to the safe area. So I have one constraint added. And I don't know if you can barely see, there's a little red on the outline on these sides. And I see I now have a red arrow here. If I click on it, it says I need constraints for the X position. So I've put a constraint in to say how far from the top it is, but I haven't made any constraints for the X direction or along here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold down the control key. Oops. And I'm going to click and drag this way. And I'm going to put leading space to safe area. And notice that the red arrow disappears. And I have a trailing constraint is missing. And the reason I have a trailing constraint missing is, and you see it has to do with localization. That's partly because if this is in a different language, it might not be the same distance from this side. So it's asking for another constraint. So usually what you can do is you can use one of the choices that Xcode gives you. And I'll, I'll add that constraint and my warnings go away. I'm going to go ahead and clear constraints one more time. And the last way that you can add constraints is by using this button here. And if I click on it, I can see that I can add constraints for the width and the height. And then this would be a one way to add constraints from the top and the left and the bottom and the right hand side. We're not going to do this right now. I just wanted to show you that there is multiple ways to add constraints. You can also add constraints to other objects. So let's say, for example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add constraints to center this horizontally in the container. And I'm going to give it a const whoops. Let me undo that. I'm going to control drag to set a vertical cons constraint to the top safe area. And notice I have no errors. And if I change the orientation, auto layout looks perfect. Well, let's say I wanted to have a button that does something. I'm going to type button. Whoops. And this button, I always want the button to be the same distance from my auto layout. So you can not only do constraints from the sides, but from other elements as well. So again, I'll go ahead and do this horizontally. And then I'll create a constraint from this button to this label. And I'll just choose vertical spacing. And notice again, I have no errors. If I want to change this value, if I click on this constraint, I can see that it's 51 pixels from this. And it shows what the two constraints are that I'm measuring against. So it's saying the first item is the top of the button. And the second item is the base of auto layout. If I want to change the constraint here to make it 30 pixels, notice it automatically updates on my screen. And then if I want to check the orientation, I see that it's still 30 pixels away, even if I rotate the device. If I choose the iPad, everything is laid out exactly as I would expect it to be.